what's going on guys welcome back to the channel welcome back we are here today with episodes 9 and 10 final two episodes of IQ season 3 and I have to say man I'm enjoying this so much the one and only Tsukashima is back on the court after getting his hand hurt um, and I'm looking forward to it to see him being back on the court is 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 very is very good it's what you want to see, you know, it's what you want to see. I was hoping he came back because they need him. They need him. They need him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, Hinata is doing the best he can, you know, you know, trying to be that middle blocker while he was out. But now that the great one is back, the great defender, Tsukishima himself. All right, let's get it. I'm ready to go. Hope you guys are ready too. I'll see you guys for the review. All right. Season three. Ten is ten episodes up, ten episodes down. Season three is over gonna be jumping into season four as soon as possible get that done my god my god my god was this a treat was this a treat or what guys you know what i'm saying season three karasuno versus shirato Izawa, man brilliantly done the animation was top notch very fluid animation as always for haikyuu never a itch you know sometimes you kind of wish the animation um, the animation um, was like like how this picture is right here, but I mean to get that level of details and I mean in in everything would have been completely ridiculous, <laughs> you know, to expect that. But it would be nice, you know. But in any case, um, this matchup, as I've said, as I'm relaxing right now to talk to y'all. This matchup, it was inevitable to happen, right, in the series. If you really go and take a step back from what happened in season at the beginning of Season 2, of the first time um, Ushijima met Hinata, right, it was bound to happen, right? As I said, it was up in the air if they were going to win this match. You know, they dedicated a whole season to this match, you know, because it, it was that good. It was that good. And I just want to say, man, shout out to the one and only Tsukishima. Tsukishima was definitely the MVP of this matchup. Definitely the MVP. And they, they set that up from season two. The, from in the beginning of season two so that was it was excellent writing it was excellent writing now you see it come full circle to him having a chance to actually go up against the person that he's been practicing to be good against you know um even though they've never played a match against them before he learned in the match how to deal with ushijima and, and not shut him down completely because when players are great like ushijima when players are great, it's hard to shut them down completely. It's not easy to do that on a consistent basis. You know what I'm saying? No matter what people say, you know what I mean? That's why, in, in, in you know, you always see when great players get shut down in one match, the next match, if they're playing the same team, usually that great players, that great player, they will have a much better game because they come back with something new. Now, I don't know what it's going to be like if these two teams ever met up against because this dude is evolving. He's young. You know what I'm saying? He's young. If they ever play Karasuna again, I wouldn't bet against them to to um to win. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't bet against them. So, it's like for me this matchup showed a lot of what Karasuna is made up of as, as I said is going to take everything that they've learned throughout season two to beat this team 
everything they've learned, everything they've improved on, all the techniques, all the new stuff they learned from first, second, minus, tempo, all of that good stuff, synchronized attack, read blocking, everything. It was going to take everything, and they made sure they showcased everything and even put in some new stuff that they did off screen that we didn't get to see them practice. Um, you know, like the sugar spike, you know, the synchronized attack with sugar in it, you know, um, so those were some things new, you know, also, you know, Noya became one of the most essential, he was already an essential piece of the puzzle, but he, he became more of an essential piece throughout the season because he was just great in the match. He saved them a lot of time, you know, and he really read Hushijima a lot to receive receive those spikes and to get them back up in the air. And as I said, there's no easy way to shut down a, a player like Ushijima, you know. You just basically got to wait it out and wait until he's tired and wait for whether his teammates are going to make mistakes, you know. But it was a well-fought match. Five sets... You know, it was a the fifth set was a full set. You know what I'm saying? It was a full set because it went into the 20s too. Um, it was 21-19 at the end, so it was it was like they played a full another full set in the end. So, my question to you guys is: I know you guys probably already know, so it doesn't make any sense for me to ask you this, but what do you guys think is going to happen? In season four or what do I think is going to happen in season four well we're going to nationals and we're going up against some of the teams that we played with in the at the camp I'm pretty sure those teams are going to be featured in season four at nationals and what I'm hoping for and this is my hope is that I know season four is not done yet but I want to see the battle at the dumpster being revived again at nationals i want to see them in the nationals finals these two teams nekoma and karasuna i want to see them in the finals um beasting and feasting and have a match like this like what they're having here in season three and give them a lot of shine i want to see nekoma um play because they're they're very like um they're a lot like Karasuno. Sorry about that. <laughs> My phone is doing crazy stuff. But I like the fact that they took time out to highlight this matchup because it was it was being foreshadowed from a long time ago. They they I think in season one they mentioned this stop school, Shirato Izawa, but they never went into any details about who they are and stuff like that. They just kind of mentioned it in regards to Aoba Josai. Um, so, yeah, man. Pretty cool stuff that happened here during this season. I don't have much else to say. All I can say is that this was a 10 out of 10 season. As if I should give it a rating, I would give it a 10 out of 10. Everything was executed to perfection, you know. Um, and I think in the end... They kind of prove my theory of even though they're still they're a strong team, man. Shirato is our is a beast of a team, and I can understand why they dominate so much. You know? And I think in the end, I think what cost them the match was not necessarily um it, it, it's not necessarily that they they lost because of their individuality. It's more of like they lost because they depend on Ushijima too much. And that's my opinion. If I should look at it from an objective point of view, they lost because they depend on him too much. He wanted the smoke, but he ain't got to give him all the smoke. You get what I'm saying? Like he wanted it. But in the end, if, if, a, if a team is watching you and they know exactly who's going to get the ball, it's kind of like back... In season one, when Karasuna lost, because Oikawa knew that Kageyama was gonna give Hinata the ball, so um, and it's 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 kind of like the same thing here, where Tsukishima 
they played a certain way for an entire set to kind of fool them. So when the three person block comes, they're not going to expect it. You get what I'm saying? So it threw them off guard because they've been studying them. Tsukishima has been watching. He's been playing them. He's been, the whole game. He's been cerebral about the entire game, even though he was out for almost the entire fifth set. When he came back, he was ready to go. He was thinking while they were treating his hand. He was thinking, he's like, okay, if I get to go back in, this is what we're going to do. And when he came back, that's exactly what he does. He called the team and he's like, listen, when we're doing three-man blocks, this, this is what we're going to do. So that's why he gets MVP in my book, man. And as I said, I don't feel like they lost because of their individual. I think one of the things that hurts Shirato Izawa and why I can't really rock with them or or it's a team that I probably wouldn't cheer for is because they depend too much on their powerhouse. It's kind of like I don't remember what year the um the Patriots when the Patriots went I think they went didn't they went they went like like 16 and 0 and then they lost in the Super Bowl to the Giants. You know what I mean? They lost in the Super Bowl. And I think it's kind of like the same thing. It was kind of like an individual thing that was going on. It was Tom Brady. He had, he was throwing to basically two people the entire, the entire season. And it was good because it, the wide receivers were that good. They were that good. So he didn't need to throw to anybody but them. You know what I'm saying? But in the finals, all that sh in the Super Bowl, all that shit went out the window because now you met up on a team that's not necessarily a quarterback that utilizes his entire team rather than depending on one dude to do the, the whole work. Of course, you're going to have standouts like, say, your Hinata and your Tsukishima. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have those standouts or your main guy that you that you throw to. But in the end, if those guys are being guarded, what are you going to do? And I'm not saying that they didn't use that they didn't utilize their team. What I'm saying is that when you're talking about a team that scores over over 40 points, over five sets, right? Over 40 points is is way more than that. It's way more than four. Oh, um, how many points they scored? Because they they had it was at least a, a um clo it's close to a hundred points they scored. Right and Hushijima had over half, as he scored over half of their points. I mean, talking about overusing someone, and I'm not saying it's not warranted. I'm just saying in volleyball, if 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 you are having a, a three set match, and it goes three sets, I'm telling you, one person is not going to have that many. Unless the other team is complete trash against your your wing spikers, or your wing spiker star or whatever, the, the other team got to be absolute trash. But this dude Ushijima is that good. That's the thing. He's that good. So I'm not taking anything away from them. I just think they use him too damn much, and I think they're gonna have to learn to use other people and mix it up a little bit and keep people off guard. And that's the reason why. Oikawa will always be top notch in my book as a setter because he utilizes his entire team. He, he, he um, and that's the thing. Even Ushijima gave him props for that because that's why he wanted Oikawa to come to his, to come to his team because he utilizes everybody so perfectly and bring out their strengths perfectly. You get what I'm saying? So, in the end. You know, I think this was just an awesome season, man. And I and I think in the end they did an excellent job of portraying the difference between the two teams, a powerhouse, you know what I'm saying, of a team like Shirato Izawa against Karasuno, who's coming up in the ranks. I love it. Thank you guys so much. Leave a like, leave a comment, and I will catch you guys later, man. Peace!